Oh no, it's the Great Depression. Two guys, one small, one huge, are walking down a road in Soledad, California to their new job on a ranch. Lenny, the huge guy, is obviously mentally challenged and too strong for his own good. He likes to pick up mice to pet them, but always kills them due to, due to his outstanding strength. He heavily looks up to George, the small guy with the brains. George looks out for Lenny, even though all Lenny does is get them both into trouble. They're heading to a new job in a new town because Lenny tried to touch a woman's dress wanting to simply pet it, but he got accused of rape. Feels bad. It is like, yeah. George tells Lenny that if something like that ever happens again, to come back to the very spot that they're camping at for safety. The pair is a dream to get rich and have a farm with lots of rabbits to pet. It's mostly for Lenny. George often recounts this dream to Lenny to boost his spirits while he's feeling down, usually after George scolds him for being a dumb over or something like that. The workers then camp out at dusk to wake up the next day and to arrive at their new job. George and Lenny get to the ranch and are greeted by this old-looking dude named Candy who owns an evilly old smelly dog. Candy gives them a tour of the ranch, and along the way the boss appears to question George and Lenny. Suspicion arises in the boss when George does all the talking for Lenny because Lenny's too dumb to talk for himself in an important situation. The boss leaves him alone, but in the process, George lies and says that him and Lenny are cousins. Soon after, the boss's son, Curly, a cocky small man, confronts the duo. He used to be a featherweight boxer with confidence issues, so he challenges people who are eight times the size of him to fights. He tries to fight Lenny, but George interferes and stops it before it can start. Telling Lenny, after the fact, to never engage Curly in a fight unless Curly puts his hands on him. Curly's wife is a... tart or translated, a sleazy person who isn't faithful to their spouse, and Curly knows it. She constantly provokes other men to do, you know. Lenny can't stop looking at her, but swiftly gets shot down by George with another lecture telling him not to get near her. Do not get near her. Cough, cough, foreshadowing. Slim is also introduced. He's a gorgeous person that everyone on the ranch likes and respects. He happens to have a pregnant dog. When Lenny hears this, all he wants is one of the puppies. Cough, cough, another foreshadowing moment. So both George and Slim agree to give him one. Carlson, another worker, suggests giving a pup to Candy to replace his old smelly dog. Cough, cough. More foreshadowing. Slim asks George why a smart guy like him is hanging around with a quote-unquote cuckoo like Lenny. George explains everything about the accused rape in the previous town and how George actually knew Lenny's Aunt Clara. He's only stayed with Lenny this long because he's realized Lenny isn't crazy, just dumb and childlike. Carlson then appears to complain about the horrible smell of Candy's dog and proposes to shoot the poor thing. Surprisingly, Slim agrees that shooting the dog and putting it out of its misery is the best course of action. Candy solemnly agrees to let Carlson do the deed outside the barn, but regrets that he didn't shoot the dog himself later. Crooks, someone we'll meet in a later chapter, pokes his head in to tell Slim that Lenny is petting the puppies too much. So Slim leaves, but Lenny, Carlson, and Curly come in. Curly is looking for his wife, and hearing that Slim is out, he automatically assumes that Slim is sleeping with her. Ironically, after Curly's departure, George and Carlson make arrangements to go to a brothel. Slim gets pissed about Curly bugging him, and Carlson eventually calls Curly a coward. Curly gets hot-headed about this and starts punching Lenny. But Lenny does absolutely nothing until George says, GET HIM! To which Lenny grabs and crushes Curly's fist. Slim shuts everything down and tells Curly to say that his hand got caught in a machine, or Slim will expose the entire situation to the rest of the ranch, making Curly seem weak. To calm Lenny down after this horrific experience, George tells the story of the farm again. This time, Candy overhears it and offers to contribute $300 to the farm if he can live with them. George agrees. Crooks, an African-American man and the only one on the ranch, is sitting in his room kept apart from the rest of the workers all lonely while most of the other men are at a brothel. Lenny, Candy, and Crooks are the few left behind. Lenny barges into Crooks' room and immediately starts blabbing about the dream farm. You'd expect the lonely Crooks to be sympathetic, but he's actually hostile towards Lenny. Being an outcast made him that way. He starts making fun of George and how dumb of a dream it is. Lenny reacts silently by threatening Crooks with his enormous stature, so Crooks backs down. Candy enters and re-explains the plan to Crooks, and all of a sudden Crooks wants in too. At this moment, Curly's wife reveals herself in the doorway and calls the left-behind men weak but shows that she's actually lonely when she sits down to talk with them anyway, even though she insults them with names like Dum Dum, Lousy Old Sheep, and the one that starts with that. After a brief conversation that involved threatening to hang Crooks, the men return from the brothel and Candy admits that they told Crooks about the dream farm to George. George becomes furious, and Crooks hastily backs out of the plan. So Lenny's in the barn with the puppies, right? He's petting them. Okay. Yeah, while he's petting one of them, he kind of breaks its neck and kills it. Hey, guess what? That's foreshadowing! He immediately becomes upset and worried that George won't let him tend to the rabbits on the dream farm if word gets out. At this moment, Curly's wife comes in and tells Lenny not to feel bad about it. She even starts to confide in Lenny, ta talking to him about how the world treated her wrongly. As a result, Lenny even confides in her and tells her about how he got in trouble in a previous town because he likes to pet soft things and he tried to pet a woman's dress. Curly's wife, hearing this, 
decides to let Lenny pet her hair because it's soft. Nothing can go wrong, right? Just kidding. Lenny accidentally breaks her neck and kills her. Hooray. Lenny evacuates the building and goes to a place that George told him about in Chapter 1 uh, if something bad happens. Now he's even more worried he won't be able to tend to the rabbits. Candy walks in on the dead wife and starts freaking out. He gets George and they make a plan to make it seem like they don't know what happened. Candy cries because the dream is dead, and George is silent with anger and sorrow. And now, there's a search party to find and kill Lenny. George misleads them on Lenny's location, so that there's time for him to meet up with Lenny before anything bad happens. Cut to Lenny, just sitting at the riverbank, worried about the consequences. He conjures up his dead Aunt Clara and a huge monster-looking rabbit in his mind that bully him and convince him that he's a burden to George and that he's not good enough to tend to the rabbits, among other things. Then George comes in. Lenny's freaking out, but is thrilled to see George. He, he tells George to yell at him so everything can seem normal and they can get over the situation. George remains quiet and instead tells Lenny to look across the riverbank and imagine the beautiful farm that they'll have in the future. At this moment, he pulls out a pistol that he stole from Carlson and aims it at Lenny's head. Lenny says, let's get that place now. George agrees, then now is the time to go to that dream place. He pulls the trigger and Lenny instantly dies. Now it's sad time. Slim and the others arrive on the scene. Slim immediately understands what happened and feels bad for George, telling all the other men to back off. He reassures George, and they go have a drink. And that's it. That was basically Advice of Men. Hope you enjoyed. Bye.